Hi everyone, Marguerite here. Recently I made a series of postcards where I created a master board, uh, which is a large piece, in this case 12 by 12 paper, um, that I then cut down into smaller sizes to make postcards. And the reason why that it is uh, a neat thing to do is because you can create a large collage and then, depending on what you want to use it for, cut out or cut down you know, ATCs or postcards or whatever kind of um, background you need for, for your art. So this is the kind of postcard I was, I made. Um, basically, I had a center piece, which is this piece of um, spin art. And then on top, uh, in addition, I added a whole bunch of different kinds of um, papers around it to create a kind of collage that kind of balanced it all out. So I wanted to show you how I made master board and how I cut it down to postcards, individual postcards. So my sister, no my sister, my daughter is creating a lot of spin art, which looks like this. Really neat stuff, small size, these are about three inches by three inches, um, and they're, they're just really pretty and it gives me lots of ideas for uh, what to make for different kinds of collages. So she made me these these ones and they look kind of like Christmas colors to me. So I thought that I would make a large 12 inch by 12 inch collage using these as my inspiration and then I would cut them down to six postcards. So everybody has or lots of people have these huge paper pads and a lot of times you don't really or there's a lot of times you have leftovers you don't you don't use them all so if you have blank sides or even if there are decorated sides uh, it's possible to use these papers as your your backgrounds um, in some cases this comes from a from a Tim Holtz paper paper pad they are already measured out into uh, postcard size so you could use something like this as a background this is a little bit too busy for me so what I did was I tore a piece of paper out of my paper pad and I drew lines of where I eventually will cut out those postcards after that I started to collect papers that would that I want to to use with these. I collected a lot of neutral papers and it's it's more than what I need so I'm gonna pick and choose what I want and I could you know also cut down a lot of these and to make them smaller bits. Um, most of them are textbook pages some handwriting, I have a kind of a, you know, a mix of, of different things. Here's a banknote. I have also some pattern paper that has a Christmas theme to it. So I cut these down into smaller bits. So I will see um, what is going to work where. And then after I have created my postcards, I will, and I, and I cut them out, on top of that I'll do some small embellishing so I might use you know things like a cigar band um, I might use some postage stamps some rubber stamping I have some washi tape and kind of a red Christmas theme um, so so we'll see that's that's all for later so for now the most important parts are essentially these these are my main colors that I'm going to be using and everything else is going to be background. So let me get sorting.
Okay, so I'm going to stop here for right now. Uh, a couple things I want to mention is that, first of all, I am keeping in mind very much so where my boundaries are. And for a lot of these pieces, I'm going to be straddling multiple sides, uh, at least two sides. Sometimes, in this case, uh, four sides. There will be four pieces in each of these uh, postcards. So I am watching that very closely. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that it's not necessary to do all of it at once. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop here. I'm going to walk away. I'm just going to leave it on my desk just like this. Um, and I'm going to come back to it later because I find that if I give something space and time, I see things a little bit differently. Um, whether if it's five minutes or a half an hour or a half of a day or the next day, um, it you come back to it with, with kind of a, of a fresh eye and you can see things that you um, missed or that you think, oh, you know what, it would look better if I moved, moved this around, that sort of thing. Um, the other thing is that, the last thing I wanted to mention is that I won't glue anything down until I have my board filled up, my master board filled up. After that, then I can start to see where, uh, what, what piece goes first and layer, layer and so on and so forth. So what you would do, or what I would do, is take pictures. Um, I'll use my mobile phone. Once I, I have everything the way I like it, take pictures of it. Um, just to make sure that if it gets bumped or if I take something off and I'm not quite sure where the placement was, I can always consult my photo uh, to see to see where I had it. So let me, um, as I said, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to come back to it a little bit later. I will turn my camera back on when I have everything laid out uh, just before I start to glue. So I'll be right back. Okay, so here is where I am at. I have everything laying in the position where I want it. I have some spaces that are um, a bit empty. And I'll show you what I mean if I bring this closer. Um, over here, for example, I have this space. I am, I'm gonna put some rubber stamping in there. Also over here, I have a large area that if I want to add something like that, after I've cut it down, I will do that. So my point is, is that I left a few spots where more things are going to be added on once I cut it out. But first, I need to glue everything down and then I will uh, start with cutting cutting them out. So with gluing down, I'm going to just use a glue stick, most likely. Um, I will very closely look what layer is on top of what. Like here, for example, I can see this is my first layer right in the bottom. So that's a first, that's an easy choice to begin. So I'll just go slowly through the corners and then make my way to the center with, with all the layers that are built up. I'll be back. Alright, so here it is. Here is my finished piece of 12 inch by 12 inch paper. You could do all kinds of things with this. You could make book pages out of this if you're making a journal. You could cut them down to ATCs. You could use them as a background for another piece of art that you would put on the top. Um, whatever, whatever you would like to do with it. I am going to make postcards from this. So what I'm going to do next is cut that, cut this down to six postcards. I will measure it out, and then I have my cutter. That I use with my ruler. I used to use this for um, sewing 
um, when I was sewing and had cloth. I'd cut it down this way and it worked really well. And ever since then, I like to use it for paper as well. There we go. Really nice and straight. Now I will cut these into one, two, three, four inches so that it's four by six. Now here's where the fun begins. So now I've got to look through them one by one and I'm going to determine what else I need to add to these. As I mentioned before, I left some blank spaces so I can do some things with um, small little embellishments. I can use postage stamps or rubber stamps or stickers or whatever else I want to do or just add even just even add more paper. This one's very interesting. I like this one with the with the piece of currency in it. Sometimes you can tell right away. See so there's this big spot right here in the middle. So we're going to need to figure out what to do to to fix that up. So I have a couple of options as I mentioned and I have these a couple of rubber stamps to play with as well as some kind of red and green themed postage stamps. What I first wanted to do was take an old scrap couple of old scraps. Let's just play around with these. And um, some ink. And let's see if I can make something interesting here. That's always the hardest decision. Let's try green on this one. Let's see what that looks like. This one's really pretty. So this I would like to use, we'll see if I can put that somewhere, for example here, is that too much to put that right there? Maybe because it, this text blends in with this text and I might need to tear off the edges. Or maybe down here. Well anyway, I will go through them one by one, that's kind of nice, and see where I can stamp and embellish more. That looks good too. Here's a nice spot right here. It's nice and blank. I'm wondering if I can just stamp directly. Come here, come here without having to paste that on. I could. I could just stamp directly on with this. Hmm, that's an idea, because that looks very good as well. Okay, so let me play around with these, and then I will show you what I come up with. Be back. I'm back with my finished product. I had my master board that I cut down into six individual pieces that I'm making into postcards. 
So I wanted to show you them individually and talk a little bit about what I did. So after I cut them out, I essentially left them on my desk and walked away and gave them um, a little bit of breathing room so that I could come back to it the next day or a couple days later and start adding things to it with a fresh eye. And the small things that I added were little bits of paper, little little pieces of, of text in, in different languages. I added some postcard or some postage stamps, um, some rubber stamping. Um, I added this rubber stamp and this rubber stamp, this rubber stamp, and that's about it. When I add things on to embellish, I'm always looking for balance. That's the main the main thing that I'm concerned with. So in this case, um, I had two very heavy pieces up here. So I wanted to add something, which I did here. And then I added on this side my two postage stamps over here with the, um, the date stamps on it. So that's one. This one, I added some rubber stamping here and here. This rubber stamping I had on this piece of paper, so I glued it on. And then some more postage stamps and this little one here. And one more rubber stamping across the top. Same thing pretty much with this. I, I really like using two stamps, so um, that's what I stuck with that. And then also the, the um, cancellation stamps as well. I think I added this and I added this little one here. This one I used washi tape, but that was at the very, very end. I did rubber stamping here, rubber stamping with this, rubber stamping with this cancellation on top of the two stamps, stamping here, stamping here, and then another little piece of, of text down there. This one is very busy, but it came out came out fine because again, I was concerned with the balance and as long as if I have good balance, then everything else kind of falls into place. So I have this red stamp here and it's balanced by this red cigar band. Um, <clears throat> I have some small things, this and this, um, but it works with my larger pieces here. The greens in particular all kind of go together. <clears throat> and this is the last one. Uh, two more stamps again. More cancellations. Uh, another stamp here and a little piece of text or, or uh, sheet music. And I'm rubber stamping up here as well. And that's about it. On the back I have these stickers. They are made by photo postos, and I buy, buy them on Amazon, they come in sets of 50. They're essentially stickers, um, so you can peel off the back and stick them onto any surface to make a postcard. So that is what I've got with all of these. So they're pretty much ready for me to embellish on the back and address and put stamps on them. And that is that. Thanks for watching.